In this video, you will learn what malware analysis is and how you can perform dynamic and static malware analysis. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Saad from CyberSudo. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and follow us on social media for more content. Now, let me tell you something that I am by no means a malware analysis expert. And I'm just trying to share with you guys what I have learned about dynamic and static malware analysis. Now, malware analysis is the process of understanding the behavior and the purpose of a file or a URL. So let's say that you have received an email from someone and this email includes a file or a URL. And you wanna check whether this file or URL is malicious or not. And this is where malware analysis come into place. Now there are two categories when we are talking about malware analysis. The first category is static analysis and the second one is dynamic analysis. Static analysis is a method of analyzing a sample or a file at the state it presents itself as without executing the file. So back to the example when we received an email from someone we don't know that includes a file in the email, what we can do is download the file and do not execute it. Now there are many ways to perform static analysis on a file. Something like signature based detection or permission based detection or a source code review. Dynamic analysis essentially involves executing the sample or the file on your machine and then observing what is going to happen. Now this is of course not safe because this file could be a malware or could be a ransomware that ends up encrypting all of your files. Now back to the previous example when we have received an email that includes a file, what we can do with dynamic analysis is to download this file but this time we are going to execute it. And when we execute it, we are going to monitor how this file actually behaves on our machine. So something like what IP address this file is trying to connect to, or what register keys this file is trying to create or modify on our machine, or whether this file is trying to download something from the internet. Now, it's not always necessary to download and execute the payload on our machine. Instead, we can use some online services that are called online sandboxing that allow us to upload our file that we think is suspicious to its server and then it will perform the dynamic analysis for us. And this is going to be much safer for us. So we can see what IP addresses the file is trying to connect to, what registry keys is trying to create or modify, and so on. Now, without being said, let's start our video. Now I'm going to start with static analysis on Windows and then we can move and use static or dynamic analysis on Linux or Windows. So here we have a file that's called image and it has an icon that seems like an image and the title could be not image, instead it could be something tempting so that you can click on it. And as you know that by default Windows would hide the extension of the files. So you can either go and view the hidden extensions by changing the settings or you can simply right click on it and go to properties and you can see that the type of the file is exe. Another thing you can do is to use a hex editor like hxd that I have downloaded and installed it online. This is it and drag and drop the file to it and you will see that a decoded text here says this program cannot be cannot be run in DOS mode which means that this file is unexecutable. Now of course this file could be a backdoor that the moment you click on it you will get an image but it's actually an executable file. So this is also one of the ways to check whether this is an image or any type of file or whether it's an executable. Another thing we can do is to extract the strings that are inside this file. And we are going to do this in Linux. I'm not going to do it in Windows because I haven't installed the string tool that will allow me to extract all the strings that are within this executable file or this image. Another thing you can do is that you can extract 
the hash of the file and then check online whether this is a malicious file or not. So I have installed a tool called hash type I'm going to put its link in the description and when you go to properties you're gonna see the file hashes tab here and when you click on it you will get the md5 hash of this file and the sha1 hash of this file so what you can basically do is copy the md5 hash and then go to a website like virus total and go to search and paste the md5 hash now of course this is only a file that I have created, nobody scanned this file, that's why it's not suspicious. So this is not always a reliable way to check whether this is malicious or not. But assuming that you have received an email that could be a spam email, and this email has been sent to hundreds of thousands of people, and then people downloaded it and executed it, and then the antivirus reported that it's a malware, then all the results will also be shared with VirusTotal. So when you copy its MD5 hash and then put it in VirusTotal, you will get your result because it's a famous malicious that's been detected by various antiviruses. So for example, when we search for the WannaCry hash and we put it in VirusTotal, we will see a completely different result. So let me share it for it. So this is the service that runs when you execute the WannaCry. And when we copy the MD5 hash and then go to VirusTotal and then put it here and then hit enter. And as you can see, it's been detected by 60 antiviruses out of 65. You can also see some more information like the SVE, what it is, it's an exploit, long sleeps, macro create, etc. And you can read much more about it and what the antiviruses categorized this file as. Now you can extract the file hash just by using the PowerShell. You don't have to use a tool to extract it for you, although it's much easier than using the command line. So to do so, I'm going to open PowerShell in this directory. And the command that we are going to use is called certutil, and then we have to specify the file hash and then the file name which is called image and then the type of the hash we want to extract whether it's md5, sha1, sha256 etc. So I'm going to say md5 and hit enter. So I've got an error because it's not file hash, it's hash file. So let me say hash file, then hit enter. And as you can see, this is the md5 hash of the file without using any tools. Now we are on Linux and what we are going to analyze is this file on the desktop which is called test.exe. So all we have to do is to go to our desktop because it's on our desktop. And similar to Windows, the first thing we are going to check is the type of the file. Now we already have the extension here, but assuming that the extension wasn't displayed all we have to do to check the file type is by typing the file command and then test me which is the file name and then enter and you can see that it's an executable file another thing we can do is to type head which will show us the first part of the file when opening it with a notepad so i'm gonna just type head and then i'm gonna type its name which is test me enter and when we scroll up you can see that this program cannot be run in DOS mood. Now assuming that you have received a file and this file ends with JPG and it looks like an image, that doesn't mean that you have to execute it immediately. It's very important to check what strings are included in this file, just like this we have seen right now, which means that this file is an executable and it's not an image. So when you click on it, you will get the image, but the payload is going to be executed on your machine in the background. So by using the file and hit command, we can determine whether it's an executable or an image. Now in Kali, if you want to use a hex editor, all you have to type is hex editor. It's pre-installed and then the name of the file, which is test me, enter. And as you can see, we have the same text as we have seen before which is this program cannot be run in DOS. Now I'm gonna say Control X and now let's see how we can extract the hash of this file on Linux. 
So to do so, it's very simple and easy. All we have to do in order for us to extract the MD5 hash, for example, I'm going to type MD5 and then sum and then the name of the file, which is testme.exe. And this is the MD5 hash of the file. Now, if you want to extract the SHA1 hash, you can just type SHA1 sum and then test me and here is the hash so you can copy this hash and put it in virus total to check whether it's a malicious or not and you can of course upload it if you don't want to extract the hash another comment that i think is useful is by extracting the strings so we can just type strings and then the name of the file and here are all the strings that we can view in this file without the gibberish that we have seen it before. So there is a lot of text, and if you have noticed anything suspicious, you can search for it online to see if this file is legit or not. Now let's assume that we have received a file, which is the https.exe, and I know that you might think that looks very suspicious, so I'm not going to open it, I won't be fault for this, but this is only a payload that I have created using MSF Venom, in your case, it could be like an image that has an icon with a JPG extension or an installer file that you can use it to install a certain program, etc. But this is only a basic example on how we are going to use dynamic analysis on Windows. So as I said before, dynamic analysis involves executing the file. And this is what we are going to do. Although this is dangerous and I do not recommend it if you are not like very familiar with malware and malware analysis, I'm just learning malware analysis just like you and I'm just trying to share what I have learned so far. So here we have a file that we think it's suspicious. So we might copy it or download it in a virtual machine and then run it. And now it's running. So what we can do right now is that we can open a program like Process Hacker that you can do download from the internet and you can see that this program actually runs in the background. So when we go to task manager, for example, then details, and then we search for it, here it is, it's running in the background. And it's this description is Apache Bench co uh, command line utility, which is a known service. So if you have searched for Apache Bench, it, you will see that it's a normal service, but this is not service, it's actually hiding or masquerading behind the Apache Bench command line utility. So what we are going to do right now is to open a program like TCP view and this will allow us to see all the connections that the processes are making. So let me search for the program which is https.exe and I'm going to stop it and only view the IPv4. So here it is, it's https.exe, it's in sync sent because it's, it doesn't have a connection with the hacker. Actually, this is a payload. And this is the source IP address, which is our IP address right now. And it's trying to connect to this IP address. You can see it's under the remote address on port 6666. And of course, if this is program that's only used to install a program, then why would it connect to the internet? So this is one of the indicators that you can keep in mind that if a program doesn't need an internet connection, then why it's connected to the internet. Another thing we can do instead of executing the payload or the program or the suspicious file on our machine is that we can upload it to online sandboxing services that will execute this file and analyze how it behaves and then it will give us a report. And one of the most famous websites are AnyRun and a website called hybrid analysis so um, here is the first website you can just upload your file and then say analyze it will take like five to ten minutes until it gives you the full report and this is the second website that i think is also very good you can register on it and then you can use it you can't use a temporary email so if you try to use a temporary email this won't work you have to use a now an email service and I've already uploaded the file our suspicious file to these websites so let me show it to you so here is the result 
from hybrid analysis the first thing is going to do is that it's going to give us a full report on how this file actually acted now we can see the threat score is 65 out of 100 percent or 100 and the antivirus detection is 83 percent which is very high and it's labeled as a backdoor and you can see that it's malicious and it also detected four indicator of a compromise and when we scroll down we can see these are the malicious indicators the first one is that it got detected by CrowdStrike analysis and the second one is that it sends network traffic on a port typically used by IRC and uses network protocol on unusual ports and then scroll down see some information of the file like the version info the description of the file comments etc you can see the company's company name is Apache which is a very well known company and this is actually a payload and it's not a file from Apache and when we scroll down a little bit you can see that it's trying to connect to this IP address which is the remote host on this port number now if we went to the second website right now and uploaded our sample what's going to happen is that it's going to execute it here and it will give us a screenshot of what happened so if a program was a backdoor then we might see what got executed in here but because it's only a payload it's not integrated with anything that's why we're not getting anything because it's actually running in the background of the operating system so when we go to connections right here you can see that that it doesn't make any http requests it's zero and in connection you can see that it's trying to connect to this IP address multiple times on port 6666 as we have seen before. And we have also two DNS requests. The first one is this one and the second one is this one. Threats, we can't see any threats in here. Now when we look at the right top corner we can see the hash file. We can also see that it has suspicious activity. And when we click on the IOC which is indicators of compromise we can see that it's trying to connect to this domain and it's trying to make a connection to this IP address. Another thing we can look at which is the attack matrix. So when we click on here, we can just see the registry queries and you can see that the program reads the computer name and check the supported languages. And on the left side, you can see a detailed description of what this technique is or why this registry key is used. Another thing we can do is that we can download a text report by clicking on the text report here and you can see that it has suspicious activity and the name of the file and then we can read the full report generated by the website. In here you can see the modification events so all the changes that happens in the registry keys. These are all the changes with the operation of write and here you can see the IP address is trying to connect to on this port. This was a basic introduction on how we can analyze a file that we have received by email or we have got in a USB drive. We have learned the basics of static analysis and dynamic analysis. I hope you liked this video and got something out of it. Please, if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and follow us on social media for more content.